Hi, I'm Sam, the founder of The Wonderhood. I'm a hypnobirthing and antenatal teacher and a mum of two. For more resources and tips on how to have a positive, empowered and well-informed birth experience, then make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and click the little bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about your birth plan. I know, controversial, and I'm sure you've been told not to bother making a birth plan because it'll literally just go out of the window at some point. So I'll talk you through why it's so important to make a birth plan, when and how to do it, and then what to do with it once you've made it. Then I'm going to talk more specifically about writing a post dates plan and what your choices are once you've reached that due date. Okay, so first things first, I want you to rename your birth plan to your birth preferences. Sounds crazy, I know, but that's going to help you think of it more as a flexible guide for how you want to be cared for in labour, whatever happens, rather than a rigid checklist. Birth is unpredictable and unfortunately it can't be planned. So it can be helpful to approach your birth with an open mind and be able to flex and change as your labour unfolds. This unpredictability is also why it's so important for you to research and learn about your choices before labour begins. So that as soon as your labour starts, you feel confident that you've made all of your decisions in advance and you won't have to worry about remembering stats and figures or anything like that during labour. Having said that, you can still 100% plan for your ideal birth and aim for that as your plan A, but also have a think about your plan B, C and D. And then you'll know that no matter what happens or where you give birth, that your midwife or consultant has guidelines of how you would like to be supported, which will make their job much easier and therefore you'll experience a lot more positive as you're more likely to get the care that you actually want. Like I said, it's so important. Throughout this course, I've taught you through and will talk you through a lot of the choices that you could be faced with during labour. So now you've got time to think them through and do some extra research or speak to your midwife about your specific concerns or circumstances. Once your midwife has answered any additional questions that you might have, then I'd suggest that you sit down with your birth partner and spend an hour going through this template. You can then talk through each option Write down your preferences and make your decisions together in advance. I've created a birth preferences template for you to download and I'd highly recommend that you use that one as a guide purely because it's so much more extensive and will prompt you to think about all of your options and take you step by step through each topic. Your birth preferences can come in any format, whatever works best for you. You could handwrite them, type them up and print them, or write them in your hospital notes, whatever's easiest. Around 36 weeks is usually a good time to have finished your birth preferences. Then at your next appointment, you can have a chat with your midwife and show her your finished birth preferences. That way, you can make sure that you're both on the same page before your labor starts and you're confident that your care team are fully supportive of your choices. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about your post-dates plan. So one part of your birth preferences that I really want you to try and think about is what you want to happen once you've reached your hypothetical due date. Would you want to have a membrane sweep or an induction? If yes, when? And if not, then what is your alternative preference? Do you want to wait until your baby is ready, however long that takes? Or do you want to have extra monitoring until your baby is ready? What is your cutoff for waiting? Lots of questions that you can answer to help you through those final few weeks with minimal stress and pressure. Once you've made a plan, then talk it through with your midwife. Make sure you do this before you reach your due date so that you won't have any surprises. Okay, so remember, research and learn about your options. Write your choices down in advance. Share this with your care team. Plan for your dream birth, but also be prepared for all eventualities, whether that's plan B, C, or D. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one for more resources and tips for a positive and informed birth. Bye.